14, we'll read. Uh, Job chapter number 1, verse number 14. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep, and the servants have consumed them, and I only alone, or escaped, I only, excuse me, am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young man, and they are dead. The young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Uh, what a tragic uh, turn of events here for Job. Uh, all of these messengers coming, obviously they are servants too. And he said, I only am alone, or I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Uh, and then, like the Bible says, there came also another, one after another. Uh, it just seemed like everything obviously was crashing down for Job. Uh, and we'll see here uh, a few different things, but there's obviously uh, a lot of things that we as humans face. Uh, I don't think that's any news to anybody. Uh, perhaps you're going through something today uh, that you never thought you'd be in this situation, but praise the Lord, you're faithful and you're in God's house this morning. Uh, but, but we see that these messengers were coming to him. And obviously, I don't ever think any of us can compare our lives to Job. I, I know that was always uh, my, my, one of my, not my favorite book, but uh, probably a book that I went to a lot growing up. Uh, the Lord put me through a lot of things when I was a teenager, uh, health problems in and out of the hospital, and I praise the Lord uh, for His healing touch, and I praise the Lord for parents that uh, knew what they were doing. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I hurt. I just knew those things that were going on, but I praise the Lord for that. Uh, he, he's allowed me to go through some things. He's allowed all of us to go through some things, uh, but we're going to talk about some of these messengers uh, that we all must face today. Uh, again, the Bible talks about those problems coming to our lives, but we know that there is always an answer, and we'll get to that later. In our introduction, uh, we will look at four different messengers that we all must face, but before we get into our introduction, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for calling me, Lord, uh, and counting me faithful and putting me into the ministry. I know that I'm nothing. I know I don't deserve to stand and speak your name today, but Lord, you've allowed me to do so. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Uh, give me your power. Help me to say the things you want me to say and not say the things you don't. Uh, Lord, help these people not to hear me and my words, but to hear you and your message. And we'll thank you for all that you do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at these messengers. Obviously, these messengers were coming, and Job just had to kind of take them. And while he was yet speaking, the Bible said, it was all at one time. It wasn't a few days past. Uh, these messengers were coming. Uh, first of all, uh, the messenger, the first one that we all have to deal with is the messenger of sin. The messenger of sin. The Bible says that is, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. We know that we're sinners. Uh, we heard a great lesson in Sunday school this morning about the, the fleshly desires and the things we see as right as man. Uh, we know that we're sinners. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is not news to any of us. I think even if you never hear those, heard those words in your life, you know you're do, you do wrong. You know that we make mistakes. Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin, and entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. It's something we all can't get away from. Job couldn't look at those messengers and say, no, I don't want to hear this. No, he needed to hear what was happening. Even if he said, don't tell me what happened, it still would have happened. Even if we don't like the fact that the messenger of sin comes into our life on a daily event, on a daily occurrence, we still can't just push it away and say, no, I'm not a sinner today. No, that's not how it happens. That's not what, how it works. We know the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. There's got to be something at the end of our, at the end of the sin, that something is going to happen. We know that that death the Bible's talking about is that eternal separation from God uh, being that in hell. We know that we all have to face that messenger of sin. You know, we don't have to be taught how to sin. You know, there's a lot of things I try to teach my children. There's a lot of things I try to teach them. My wife does a great job at uh, getting them to know uh, a lot more than they should at their age. Um, good stuff, by the way. Uh, but, but she does a great job at teaching them. Uh, we don't have to teach them how to misbehave. Uh, we don't have to teach them. I, I, I learned that we are those parents that threaten things that you would never actually do. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll learn that eventually on the way in here. My wife's like, Jay, do you want me to leave you in the car during the whole service? Obviously, we wouldn't do that. Maybe she would. Uh, she hasn't come to that yet. Uh, but anyway, we are those parents. But we know we don't have to teach our children how to sin. 
You did not have to be taught how to sin. Unfortunately, there's a lot of examples of that going on around us in the world. But we know that we have that sin nature, that fleshly desire. Uh, there is a debt for our sin. We know we've already talked about that. And that is death. That's the first messenger that we all must face, is that messenger of sin. Secondly, uh, we'll look in a couple different places about this messenger of suffering. The messenger of suffering, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, we all have to go through things, whether it be a physical, uh, mental even, uh, financial burdens, whatever it might be, we have that messenger of suffering that's going to come along at some point in our lives. You say, I'm not going through a trial right now. Just wait. You will. The Bible says in Psalm 34, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It doesn't say uh, that uh, maybe you'll go through some afflictions. No, this is a promise of God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. All right, but it says in Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 11, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Uh, we don't enjoy the fact that we have to go through things sometimes to correct us, uh, for God to get our attention. That's not fun. It's not fun to be punished. All right, we have to go through those sufferings. Sometimes God allows things into our life. Why? Because He's trying to get our attention. Uh, I praise the Lord for God allowing me to go through those sufferings. Uh, if, a, a little bit about me. I was uh, saved at a very early age. At the age of four, I believe I was seven or eight when I surrendered uh, to full-time Christian service to do whatever God wanted me to do. Uh, when I was uh, nine or ten, I, I surrendered to preach. I, I, I listened to the call to preach, and I'm thankful for that. But as I got into my early teenage years, I, I'd always loved basketball. All right? I believe I was dribbling at the age of two. I just uh, made my first shot on a real goal at four. All right, Not what these little kids shoot on these days. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I loved basketball. I still enjoy watching basketball. I still enjoy playing basketball. But that was my life. Uh, that was everything I wanted to do. That was everything that was my goal. All right? I, I still knew in the back of my mind, yeah, maybe I'll preach after. All right? But I wanted to go to college. I wanted to do those things. I, I wanted to. All right, uh, and I didn't see a goal out there. I don't think you have one here, or I'd show you what I was talking about. But anyway, um, uh, that is what my goal was. That was my new desire. Uh, I, I had said, yes, God, I'll answer to the call to preach, and then I had kind of got my focus off what he wanted me to do and what I wanted to do. All right, there's nothing wrong with playing sports. There's nothing wrong with those things, but if they take you away from the things of God, all right, that is when it becomes wrong. All right, that is that weight we need to set aside. All right, and I praise the Lord that God got my attention uh, when I was a young teenager. Right, he had to do it a few times, but he got my attention. Uh, and I praise the Lord that he allowed me to start writing songs, and he started giving me those things uh, that he even enables me to do today. But I'm pr I praise the Lord for the suffering in my life. Um, there's a, a song that's, that's on our CD. Uh, it's called Thankful for the Suffering, uh, and it means a lot to me. Uh, but you say, how can you give thanks for suffering? The Bible says we need in everything give thanks. Uh, we need to be thankful for the fact that sometimes God's going to allow those things, whether it be uh, a test, saying just like he tested Job here, he allowed God or Satan to test Job. Uh, but those things sometimes that we even cause to come into our life. And we need to be thank thankful for those. Why? Because God is counting us faithful. Or he's, he's saying, I'm going to put this into your life and you're not going to forsake me. Or he, he thinks that much of us, uh, that he would put those sufferings in our life that he still thinks will depend on him. We know that his grace is sufficient for us. So we see the second messenger of suffering. Thirdly, we'll, we'll move on to the messenger of striving. The messenger of striving. Uh, Proverbs eleven fourteen says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Obviously, we know this is our greatest counsel that we can have. Uh, we have the counsel of our pastor. We have the counsel of the man of God in our life. We have the counsel, obviously, uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, when we're in our prayer time. We have those things. The Bible says in Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Uh, we all have decisions on a daily basis that we have to make. Uh, a decision. When I wake up today, what am I going to do? Am I going to live for God? Or am I going to live for self? Uh, it's a decision we have to make daily. It was mentioned earlier, I die daily, Paul said. All right, Paul, I believe one of the greatest Christians that has ever walked the face of this earth realized that sometimes he did he, the things he wanted to do, he didn't do those things. Why? Because he knows he was a sinner. Sometimes the things he wanted to do, he, he didn't do those things. Whatever it might have been, we all un need to understand that we have that messenger of striving that comes to us. Every day, we have to make decisions. Many times we, in our life, we encounter decisions that we don't know how to make. We don't understand uh, what road to take. We have that messenger of striving. We even strive with making the decisions that we know are right. Uh, we have that fleshly desire like we talked about earlier, that messenger of sin. Uh, we have those things, those decisions we know are right. We know that we're supposed to do them every day, and sometimes we don't. Uh, we strive with our flesh. Uh, we see that messenger of striving. Fourthly, we see another messenger that comes into our life, the messenger of suspense. The messenger of suspense, not knowing what's going to happen. All right, that is one of, the, one of my least favorite things in life is just not knowing what's going to happen. I remember praying for a spouse. 
I remember praying, God, show me who you want me to marry. Uh, and I, I remember praying this to God as a foolish young child. God, I don't care. I don't have to get married now, but just tell me who it is. All right, uh, you, I, I'll wait 10 years, but just tell me who it is. No, that's not how it works. Uh, and I praise the Lord that I waited uh, for God's will for my life. Uh, and she is a wonderful addition, I guess you would say. Uh, but I, I praise the Lord for doing those things. Uh, but we see that messenger of suspense, not knowing what's going to come. We struggle uh, with our future, uh, not knowing what today holds. Uh, it was mentioned earlier, uh, putting gas in the tank. I'm sure everybody that puts gas in the tank has realized uh, that it's going up and up and up. All right, we don't know when that's going to end. You know, God does. Obviously, God knows what we need. God knows we need gas in the tank. God knows we need food on the table. God knows those things. But we struggle with our future. Uh, what tomorrow holds. Um, if there is a tomorrow. Uh, I know sometimes people worry about that. They think, oh man, maybe today is the day I'm going to die. Maybe it is. Uh, but we just need to remember that we need to live every day like it is our last. What happens after death? We, sometimes we face that. What happens after I die? This whole world is confused on what happens after we die. As long as we're at peace with ourselves, most people think, then, then, then that will take care of ourselves. No, that's not how it works. We need to understand uh, that there is that messenger of suspense. What happens to this world? Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, we they hear all the talk about global warming. You hear all those things about uh, how we need to be, yes, we need to be good stewards of what God has given us, all right, but he's in control. All right, just because we drive a big uh, eight-cylinder uh, four-wheel drive doesn't mean we're going to make the world come to an end faster than God wants it to. Amen? Uh, so uh, just go, if you drive a Prius, I'm sorry, but anyway... Um, but I guess you, you're liking this gas situation a little better than the rest of us. Uh, but anyway, we see all of these messengers, that messenger of sin, uh, that messenger of suffering and striving and suspense. Uh, but if you, if you noticed, there was a phrase uh, that they were all saying, yes, I only am alone es escaped to tell thee. Uh, but that phrase, there came also another. Yep. There came also another. That's the title of our message today. There came also another. We as Christians have something that others don't. Uh, we have the Bible. Uh, we have those things. Obviously, it's available to all. But we need to remember, these messengers come. All right, look with me uh, at, the, at verse number 20. This is after Job has heard from all of these messengers. After he has heard everything that went wrong. Uh, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He worshipped after all this and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I, re I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job knew, just like he told his miserable comforters of friends, as he called them, uh, later on in the book of Job, Job says, I know my Redeemer liveth. Yeah. I know that he lives. All right, Job, this was before Jesus ever came. This was before, um, the, I guess, the Ten Commandments had been given. This is before the law that, that God gave Moses. This is before all of that. But God knew that his, or Job knew, excuse me, that his Redeemer lived. All right, we see all of these messengers. All right, you see that me messenger of sin that comes, comes to us. What do we need to say? There came also another. I'll tell you who came. Obviously, Jesus came. He died for us on the cross. So we see, first of all, when the messenger of sin comes, we have a consolidator. Uh, we have a consolidator. All right, you, you think of that word consolidation. A lot of times, we, what, what do we think of? Debt consolidation. All right, what happens? Hopefully, you've never been in the situation. Praise the Lord, I haven't yet. Hopefully, I don't ever get there. But you go into that debt consolidator. What do they do? They roll all of your debts that you owe into one thing. All right, and they set you on a, up on a payment plan. All right, but praise the Lord. One day, Jesus came and he died on the cross, and he paid for our sins. He took the, the debt of all the world and rolled it into one, and he made his own payment plan. We don't have to pay anything. We don't have to, to make payments. We don't have to do those things. I'm debt-free today. Praise the Lord, because I have a consolidator. That we read earlier, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a blessing that is, that we do have that messenger of sin come, but pr praise the Lord, Jesus is in my life. I have that debt consolidator. I don't have to pay for it, but he can also help me have victory over those very sins that used to torment me. What he did on the cross paid for our sins. He consolidated our debt. The Bible tells us that he doesn't even remember our sins. The Bible tells us that he cast that into the sea of forgetfulness. The Bible says all of these things that, that no longer does he look down and see us as, man, that, that's the guy that used to do this. No, he sees his son when he looks at us. Praise the Lord, he sees perfection. We know we're not perfect, but we have that debt consolidator that said, you know, I'll take all of that on my own shoulders and I'll pay for that debt. He, he doesn't remember our debt. He doesn't remember the things that he had to pay for. You know, praise the Lord, one day we won't either. 
The Bible says that we'll stand before Him in the new heaven and we'll stand there and He'll wipe away all the memories and all the shame that we have in our life. All those things, we won't remember any of that. We won't remember the things that put Jesus on the cross. We won't remember any of that because, praise the Lord, we have been debt free. We have been wiped clean by the blood of, the Je- by the blood of Jesus Christ. Excuse me. So with that messenger of sin comes, we have a consolidator. You know, there came also another, the messenger of, of sorrow, of suffering comes. We have a comforter. We have a comforter. We, we read earlier, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's a promise of God. I mean, the verse doesn't stop. It says, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Right. That's two promises there. The Bible, yeah. Jesus says, you know, God says, he's, David's talking here in Psalm 34, but he's saying, uh, God is saying, the, the afflictions are going to come, but God is going to deliver you out of them all. Just yeah. depend on him. If we get into those afflictions and we try to face everything by ourselves, we try to figure everything out, we try to make everything better, that's not going to work. We need to go to God every morning and say, God, I don't know how to handle this exactly. You've showed me how to handle it by coming to you, by trusting in you. You've showed me how to do those things, but I am depending on you. We have a comforter that we have that person that's going to deliver us out of them all. Uh, We read earlier in Hebrews 12, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Uh, so the Bible says that that chastening that comes, that we have to suffer through, that sometimes we put ourselves through, that chastening, it, it's not, it's not gr- joyous, it's grievous, but afterward it yieldeth a peaceable fruit. Right. All right, that, that it says, unto them which are exercised thereby. Yeah. All right, um, that word exercise, it doesn't just happen. All right, it's something we have to put ourselves through. It's something we go through. All right, whether it be uh, you wanting to do it or somebody forcing you to do it. All right, that, that exercise that we have, that physical exercise, it's, it's hard work. All right, we have to push ourselves. We have to do those things. So God is saying it's hard to go through this chastening. It's hard to be put through those things to get you back on track. But afterwards, it yieldeth a peaceable fruit. The Bible refers to him as a comforter. Jesus said, I won't, I won't leave you alone. I'll send another. Uh, there came also another. Uh, the Bible refers to him as the comforter. He brings good out of the pain that He allows in our life. Uh, he, he brings good from it. The Bible says He worketh all things for, uh, for good, for our good. Not He doesn't give us all good things. He worketh all things for our good. Again, who? To them who are the called according to a purpose, to His purpose, to them that love God, the Bible says. We need to remember that He uses these things to help us grow. Uh, so there came also another, there, there came that comforter. Uh, thirdly, uh, we need to re- realize when the messenger of striving comes, we have a counselor. We have a counselor. Uh, Proverbs 3, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, this is not something... Again, you need to pay attention to every word that God has given us in Scripture. In all thy ways. Not just spiritual ways. Uh, not, not just those things. In all thy ways. Uh, God cares about uh, your everyday tasks. God wants you to do those things. He, he wants to direct your paths if you just let him. Uh, 1 John five fourteen it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask... Anything according to His will, He heareth us. The confidence. All right, that's something that that I tried to learn uh, in sports. Um, my dad taught me that, uh, and the, all the Pistol Pete instructional videos. If you know what I'm talking about, you know where I'm coming from. Uh, but he talked about confidence. All right, not cockiness, but confidence. Why? Confidence in your ability. Confidence in your practice. Confidence in your efforts that got you to that point. All right, so when our confidence in our Christian life. We're going to be a whole lot more confident if we've spent time with God that day. And we're going to be a whole lot more confident if we're depending on Him and not in ourselves. When it, when it becomes us, we become cocky, we become prideful. That's not what we need to do. Uh, His Word, prayer, and the Holy Spirit is where we should turn for every decision. Uh, we know that we need to make Him a part of the decisions, all the big decisions, all the little decisions. But when you really think about it, every decision we make is a big decision. Why? Because it's either right or it's wrong. All right, there's no middle ground. There's no uh, gray area with God. It's black and white. Uh, we need to understand uh, that we have that counselor to help us make those decisions. Uh, and lastly, we'll look. The messenger of suspense. Uh, when, we, when that messenger comes, we have a conqueror. We have a conqueror. Uh, we know that 1 John 5.13 says that if we, we, we believe in the name of the Son of God, that we may know that we have eternal life. Uh, we have those things. All right, we don't have time, but we could read through the whole book of Revelation. We could see everything that's going to happen, uh, all of the processes that God is going to allow. God is going to uh, allow things to go through. Obviously, uh, I believe things are already in motion. Uh, I believe things are already working towards that. Uh, obviously, it's just common sense that every day we're getting closer and closer to Christ's return. Uh, but we know that He's already conquered death. He's already conquered hell. He holds the keys, the Bible says. Uh, he is the one in control. 
Right. Uh, we think, how can all these things go on around us? Uh, God is in control. Uh, we, need, we need to understand that even when we don't understand, God is in control. That's a very, very difficult thing. Again, uh, for me, I like to know how things work. I like to know uh, if something's broken, I want to fix it. How did, how, what happened? Uh, all those things. All right? In our Christian life, sometimes we need, to un- we need to understand that we have to accept. We're not going to understand. Uh, we're not going to be able to figure it out. Uh, we have that conqueror. We don't have to win. We just have to make sure we're on the right side. All right, the Bible says that he's already won. Uh, we know that he is the conqueror. He's conquered death, hell, and sin forever. Again, it's just us, uh, up to us to pick uh, whose side we're going to be on. All right, I've used a few sports analogies. You think of all the uh, NBA greats. All right, Michael Jordan, I believe, is still the best. All right, uh, maybe you disagree there. Uh, definitely not any of the guys playing today. Uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. But anyway, you, you look at all those uh, Hall of Fame guys. All right, and then you go pick a team uh, from a middle school. All right, and you put them out there and say, you get to choose which team you want to be on. All right, I, I, it'd be pretty obvious that if I wanted to win, I would pick this team. All right, it's pretty obvious. It's a silly illustration. All right, but when you look at the things of this world, at the things of God, and when you realize, okay, God is obviously greater than all of these things. Uh, he's going to win. He's already told us he's going to win. Which side do we want to be on? It's that simple. Uh, it's that simple that we have that conqueror. You know, whatever comes along, whatever messenger approaches you on any given day, uh, we can remember there came also another. Uh, there came also another. To, perhaps today you're here uh, and uh, you've been dealing with your salvation. Uh, you've been dealing with the fact that you have to you sin every day. All right. Yes, you, you try not to, but you know, you can never try hard enough to get rid of it yourself. Uh, we know that there did come another. There came our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, there, there came that one and the only one. The Bible says the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. We know this. All right? we, it's a fact. It's not something we can get around. We can't choose a different way. All right? uh, again, I, I mentioned that earlier, that there's so many people in this world that believe that as long as you just pick your way, that's the right way. That's not how it works. Uh, we know that it's God's way uh, or, or no other way. Uh, so if you're, again, here today and, and, you, and you've struggled with that, uh, you, you've, you've been dealing with the fact uh, that you don't know where you're going to heaven. There, there came also another. Obviously, that messenger of sin is knocking on your door, that messenger of the fact of suspense, not knowing what's going to happen. All right, the Bible tells you what's going to happen. The Bible tells you uh, that uh, if, if we believe not, we're condemned already. Uh, the Bible tells us that, but verse before that, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You know, I've heard that a million times in my life. I still love it. I'm still, I'm still thankful for it. I'm still grateful uh, for the fact that God saved me. Uh, so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, but Lord, thank you mostly for your Son. Uh, God, we know that we have these messengers that come into our life. We have these things that we all have to face. Obviously, we don't have to face maybe uh, all the same things as Job. Maybe we can uh, align a little bit uh, to what he went through. But Lord, we need to remember his attitude. Uh, After all of this, he fell down and he worshipped. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, We need to remember that our Redeemer lives. We need to remember that you're still alive. You're still as powerful as ever. You're still good, as we heard earlier uh, in song. God, you're always going to be good. Uh, God, help us to depend on you. Help us to realize that you're there for every situation in our life. Uh, Lord, we'll thank you for what you do uh, in the rest of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always... Thanks for listening.